In this video, I'll show how we can build a quick sample masher in Reactor that will loop any sample and also allow the user to jump to any point in the sample using MIDI notes. So to begin with, I'm going to create a new macro and add a sample lookup module, which of course can be found in the sampler menu. The sample lookup module just has two inputs. The first is the position of the sample in milliseconds, and the second is the amplitude. And the simplicity of this module is one of the reasons why I really like it a lot. It also does not use sample maps. It only loads a single sample at a time. So let's just wire up the outputs real quick. The next thing I want to do is build a controller for the position input, and I'm going to use an integrator filter for that. And what the integrator filter does is it stores a value and takes an input, and the value of the output increases by the value with the input each millisecond. So if we give the input a value of 1, then the integrator will basically act like a timer. So to begin playback of our sample, I'm going to use a button. And when the button is pressed, we're going to use a value module to set the integrator's value to 0. And then we could also use the on button to control the amplitude of the sample lookup module as well. However, it's nice to have a knob to give us uh, control other than simply on or off. So I'm going to create an amplitude knob and multiply it by the on button. And this way, whenever the on button is equal to zero, the amplitude will be equal to zero as well. Alright, so the structure works well enough, and when the on button is pressed, it will play back the sample one time. However, the output of the integrator module is constantly increasing, so eventually it will re reach a place where it exceeds the length of the sample. And to fix this problem and make our sample player actually loop, we can compare the output of the integrator to uh, the length of the sample and use an audio to event trigger module to trigger a new event that turns the integrator, sets the integrator to zero whenever the output of the integrator is greater than the length of the sample. And this should give us a looping sample. Alright, so let's rearrange everything briefly and then connect the output of our macro to our speakers. And I'm going to end up making this entire macro mono, so we're not going to use the voice combiners. We can delete them. Alright, so since the sample lookup module does not use a sample map, we can't use the sample map editor that we would normally use to load samples. However, in the properties in the function tab, there is a simple sample loader that we can use to load a single sample into our module. Alright, so now we have our sample playing and looping, so let's move on to MIDI control. Okay, so to keep our structure as simple as possible, I'm going to create our MIDI control structure in a new macro that will receive the length of the sample as an input. 
And inside this macro, we're going to use incoming note pitches to choose the present position of our sample playback. So to begin with, I'm going to create a note pitch module and a knob that I'm going to name base. And the base knob will control which MIDI notes can be used to control the position of our sample playback and the lowest note pitch that will control the sample will be the bass pitch. So we're going to subtract the bass from the pitch and we're going to make sure that <coughs> the output of that is greater than or equal to zero and also that it is less than or equal to the number of steps that we are going to have in our sample, which will be controlled by another knob. So we can add together the greater than or equal to outputs to give us a greater than or equal to signal, and then we're going to end up multiplying the output to make sure that not only is the value greater than or equal to zero, it's also less than the number of steps that our sample has. So the step knob can range from 4 to 32 or more if you'd prefer, but I think that's plenty large. So after we multiply these two values together, we'll be left with a value of either 0 or 1. 1 if it's within the range that we're looking for, 0 if it's not. So we can use that value to control a router that will allow our pitch value through only if it's within the range that we're looking for. Alright, so now we can do a little bit of simple math and calculate the length of each step in milliseconds. So simply divide the length over the number of steps and then we can multiply the output of that value by the output of our router. And I'm going to use an order module to make sure that the value is only triggered when um, there's a new pitch input and not just when someone turns the pieces knob. So we'll store the s product of this multiplication in a value module and then trigger it with our third output of the order module. So the output of this macro will give us the new position of our sample in milliseconds. So we can simply merge this with the set input of the integrator module, like so. Okay, so I took the time to rearrange the panel of this structure. Now I'm just going to duplicate it, and we can add together the outputs in order to now have two sample loopers and each one has its own um, MIDI controller that allows you to choose uh, the base and the number of pieces in the sample so you can create two or four or however many loopers and map them to be controlled by different parts of your keyboard as I'll show in just a minute First, I'm going to use the MIDI Learn function to give us MIDI control over the on buttons of our samplers as well. And that is pretty easy. You simply right click and choose the MIDI and OSC Learn function and then press the MIDI note that you want to control that button. Alright, so now I'm going to set one of the samples to start at 
note 48 and the other one to start at note 64 and I'll give them each 16 pieces and show you what this little structure we made can do. Alright, so unfortunately my timing is pretty terrible and I'll never be a drummer, but hopefully you get the idea of what this can do. In the next video, I will show how we can greatly improve upon the structure.